In 1930, Mukhtar held a solo exhibition at Gallery Bernheimjun, the oldest art gallery in Paris, showing his sculptures in bronze, marble, and other materials. In these works, he combined the imagery of ancient Egypt with the aesthetics of European classicism, causing a sensation in the European art world. The French government at the time also purchased a marble version of the Bride of the Nile statue. This masterpiece is displayed in the collection of Georges Pompidou National Center for Culture and Arts Collection in Paris. In 1934, Mukhtar died of leukemia in Cairo at the age of 43. Despite his relatively short life career, he is still regarded as Egypt's most famous sculptor and the worthy father of modern Egyptian sculpture. The artistic style he pioneered laid the foundation for the history of modern Egyptian art. His work is seen as the beginning of the modernist art movement in Egypt. His famous intellectual comrades, including Egyptian feminist pioneers Huda Sharawi, whom he made during his lifetime, founded the Association of Mukhtar's Friends after his death and tirelessly launched a campaign to raise funds to build a museum for Mukhtar's artworks. In 1952, the Mahmud Mukhtar Museum was opened to the public on Zamalek Island, surrounded by the Nile River in the center of Cairo and facing the Cairo Opera House. The famous architect Ramses Wissa Wasif, the son of the prominent Egyptian politician Wissa Wasif mentioned in the previous chapter, designed this museum. This sanctuary of modern Egyptian art houses and exhibits most of Mukhtar's works. In addition, you could admire some of the master's sculptures in Egypt's Alexandria Museum of Art and the Museum of Modern Art in Cairo. Egypt has always been the crossroads of every major civilization in the world. After thousands of years, the relics of these ancient civilizations are still well preserved here. They are the true treasures of this planet. Monuments and giant statues have always symbolized a social civilization's authority, glory, and identity. The pyramids and obelisks representing eternity and remembrance, the Mamluk tombs, as well as today's public statues, allow us to observe and think why it is human nature to be remembered and chase after glory. The statue of the Egyptian Renaissance was moved from the square in front of the railway station where the inauguration ceremony was held to Cairo University Avenue between the Giza Zoo and the Oman Botanical Garden on the west bank of the Nile River in 1955 and was erected facing to the east. Some people say, every morning, when the sun rises over Mount Mokadam on the east bank of the Nile and shines on the monument, it seems to wake up Egypt. But in my opinion, moving from the bustling east bank of the Nile to the relatively quiet west bank of the Nile River is itself a reflection of the changing political situation. Perhaps after the overthrow of the Muhammad Ali dynasty in Egypt by the Free Officers Movement, the Egyptian Renaissance statue as a monument to the nationalist spirit has lost the importance it once had. It has been two generations since the statue was relocated, and now only a few older people can still tell the past of this great work as if enumerating one's family valuables. And for the thousands of students who pass the statue to Cairo University, ordinary families taking picnics to the zoo or botanical gardens, and people commuting on the newly opened subway line. This monument of modern Egyptian art seems to be as old as the city's pyramids, obelisks, Islamic-era castles, Mamluk mausoleums, and other sites. It becomes the most acquainted yet strange everyday landscape. And Mukhtar's name has rarely been mentioned by the public. If I hadn't done a comprehensive documentation project for Cairo's scenic spots this time, I might have missed this artist's great works. My visit to this sanctuary of art did not go as well as expected in the beginning, because the business hours provided by Google are not 100% accurate. Unlike other major attractions in Cairo, this less visited art treasure has minimal opening hours. Due to various religious festivals, closed days, lunch breaks, and temporary closes, you could be turned away. If you're not based in Cairo, you'll need to pray for your luck or a flexible schedule to see it all. It was only after I visited it three times that I succeeded in admiring those art masterpieces.